All right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the uh, Google Translate API into your Bubble IO app so you can translate text into whatever language you want. So we need to set up a few things here. So the first thing I'm going to set up is an option set. Now this will be uh, the language that we want it translated in. So, you know, we could have it in Spanish. Each uh, language has a code. So Spanish is ES, uh, German is DE, for example. So we need to set that up so that we can reference that and send it to the Google Translate um, API and get that you know return translation. So our first option set is going to be called language. And we're going to add a new attribute here and call it the code. And we're just going to have this as type text. And then I'm going to add in a couple of different languages here. So we'll go Spanish, we'll go German, we'll go Russian. All right, now, as I said, each one of these options needs their own uh, specific code. So you can copy these three options here, or you can do your own research and get your own sort of languages that you want them translated in. But this is just the most basic and most popular. So Spanish, we're going to go AS. German, going to be DE. And Russian is going to be RU for Russian. All right, now that we have that set up, I'm quickly going to navigate to the Bubble Docs here, and we have the Google Translate API section here. So, what we need to do is read this documentation, you know, make sure we understand it. And we can see here that it says you need to find your Google Cloud API key. So, what we're going to do is open a new tab here, and we're going to go to the Google Cloud. Now, just make sure you sign in with your Gmail account. It doesn't matter for this. And what I'm going to do is up the top here, I'm going to add a new project. And I'm just going to call this anything. This does not matter. I'm just going to call this translation for YouTube. I'm going to create that. And then that will create and it's loading. As you can see, that is loading. Once this is created, we need to make sure we select this. So select that one. And then we need to add an API here. And this will be the Google uh, Cloud API translation, I believe it's called. So I'm just going to type in translation. And it's the Cloud Translation API is what we're after. So we're going to hit Enable here. And then this is going to tell me that I need to add a billing account. So when you use Google services, you need to provide a billing account. This actually won't be anything, like this won't actually cost you anything, this. But um, just for the example's sake, it's gonna ask us for a billing account and I already have one set up. But you will need to do that as well. I think you just need to add in your card details and you know, if you're using this just for an example and just to learn, it's not gonna really charge you anything anyway. So as you can see, that's enabled fine now. We have the Cloud Translation API. We need to navigate to the credentials section here and we need to create our own secret uh, API key. So we have the API keys here. We need to navigate to the top and hit create credentials. This is going to be our secret key that allows our bubble app to talk to our cloud account and get us that translated text. So we need to hit API key here and it's going to generate us a secret key. This will be disabled, so you need to make sure that you're using your own um, API key in your own examples. So I'm going to copy that. And then we're going to close that. Now we are ready to go in Bubble. So that has been created. Now we need to go back to our Bubble application here and go to the plugin section and we need to add in the API connector. This is how we're going to actually communicate with uh, the Google console. All right, so we're going to press add another API here and I'm going to call this Google Translate. Now this is going to be a private key in URL. Uh, this is all here in the bubble documentation. So you can read this or you can either copy along with me as I've already got this sort of stuff formatted for you. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> private key in URL and the key name, we're just going to change this to all lowercase to key. And then we want to paste that uh, key we just created from our Google Cloud Console into the private key here. 
All right. Now that is all set up, we want to add another, or expand our call here. And we're going to name this, we're just going to say translate text. Now we're going to use this type action because we are going to reference this in the workflow and make sure the um, values is dynamic. So basically what that means is someone can select whatever language they want. Whereas if I was to make this app with them three uh, languages are already added, you know, people aren't going to just want them. They're going to want more. So we're going to use this as an action here and we're going to add a post here because we're sending data to the cloud translation API. All right, now, if we go back into the bubble documentation here, scroll down, it's, you can see that we need to add in this URL. So I'm gonna go into this for you. This is gonna take me to the actual Google Cloud documentation. And this is the URL we are posting to. So I'm gonna hit copy that. And this is, we're gonna, we're gonna paste this in here. Make sure we get rid of the post. So we're left with the HTTPS. And then what we want to do here is we're going to add some JSON body. So this is going to actually send us, um, send the data to Google Translate and get us that returned value. So it basically tells us here, this is a request body. So the question, so this is going to be the text that's getting translated. So the Great Pyramid of Giza, just say, the source is going to be EN, which is English. So that's the language that uh, has been typed and is getting sent into the Google Translate. The target is a language we want, so ES is gonna be uh, Spanish, and the format is obviously of type text. So I've actually gone and created this dynamic uh, JSON call here. I'll leave it in the description, so you can go along and copy and paste it into your app. It's just gonna save us a bit of time here. So as I said, I've made this dynamic, so we can see we have two values here. We have input text, so this is basically just gonna be any text. So we're just gonna say anything, for example. So this is basically the question or the you know thing we want, the text we want translated basically. And then the language here, I've set it to drop down language because we're gonna reference them three option sets I set up earlier in AR drop down. And for this, we're just gonna say ES for Spanish. All right. Now we have all that done, we are ready to initialize the call here. So we have the input text, which is you know whatever we want translated, and we have the drop down language. That's going to be the language we're not translated to. The source is English. I am in uh, Australia, so you know it's going to be English. But if you happen to be anywhere else in the world, you can change this to whatever your code is, and the format is type text. And I'm going to hit initialize call here. And as you can see, we have a returned value and our translated text is there, as you can see. And I, I, I don't know Spanish, so just there is our return text. I'm gonna hit save on that one. All right, then what we're gonna to wanna to do here, actually, I'm gonna tick this box here, sorry guys, and then reinitialize, just like that. As you can see, it's a bit better there. We got no returned errors. We have our translated text. Gonna hit save. And then how do we actually get this in the um, you know front end of bubble? So I have a plain canvas here. I'm gonna set this to a column of 1200 width. Gonna container alignment to the center. And I'm not gonna worry about any styling in this, guys. This is basically just the logic to show you how to get it done quickly. So we're gonna need a drop down here. This is gonna to be to choose the language that they want. So this is gonna be a dynamic choices. And then what is that gonna be? It's gonna be our language option set that we set up. The choices source is gonna be all of the option sets. And the option capping is gonna be the current options display. So this is gonna be the display, which will be Spanish, German, Russian. We obviously don't wanna send the current options code yet because you know people might not know what that represents. So, and then after that, I'm gonna center this element. And then I'm gonna add in a multi-line input here. Now this is gonna be our text that we want translated. I'm gonna untick fixed width, zero on the min width, and 400 on the max width. Min height, 160. This is all just random numbers here. Just give us a bit of room. 
And then we need a button. So this is going to say translate. So when someone clicks button translate, what do we want to happen? We want to send an API call to the Google Cloud, translate our text and you know display that return text. So we're going to center that as well. And then we're just going to display our return text in a text field here. And I'm going to press on the canvas here, guys. And I'm going to hit apply gap spacing and we're going to go 24. And on the text, I'll just hit this uh, A heading six, just like that, make it a bit bigger. And I'll also center that element here. All right, so what we're gonna do is run the workflow now. So press button translate, add workflow. The first thing we're gonna do is make our call to our Google Translate text. And as you can see here, uh, our Google Translate Translate text, we need to press delete there. I mustn't have initialized the call again. We're gonna, oh, sorry, so I need to untick private. Sorry guys, that's completely my fault. Untick that, otherwise we won't be able to reference these in the uh, workflow, that is my fault. I'm just gonna hit reinitialize and just save that. All right, back in the workflow, now these uh, results will be here. So plugins, translate text, and now we have the two dynamic results. So. The input text is going to be our multi line input A's value, which is this element here. And our drop down language is going to be drop down A's values code. And now this is where we're sending the code to the translation. All right, just like that. And then we need to save this uh, response somehow. So. I added the text element in here before, as you can see, but we're gonna to go to the workflow and I'm gonna just use a custom state here. So I'm gonna set the state of an element and we're just gonna set this state at page level. Custom state can be anything you like. I'm just gonna say translated and it's just gonna be type text here. Okay, so we're setting the state of the, um, of the page. And the value is going to be the result of step one, Google translates, bodies, translations, first item, translated text. So a bit of a mouthful there. I will zoom it out for you so you can copy along and, and um, make sure it's right. Just like that. And then the last thing we need to do here is go back to our design. And on the text itself, we need to reference this dynamic custom state. So this is gonna be our index, because that's what our page is called. Indexes, custom state, the new one we just created. Indexes, translated, and that's all we need. Just like that. All right, now let's see if this works here, guys. So I'm gonna turn off debug mode, make it cleaner choosing our option, we'll go Spanish, and we'll just say, I love wine. Hit translate, just like that. You can see we have a returned translated text. We'll see what this translate to. So I'm gonna go into Google and go Google Translate. We'll enter this text and paste that in. And as you can see, I love wine. So we have now translated an English text to Spanish inside of Bubble IO. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure to like, subscribe, and comment with any video video ideas and suggestions you would like to see in the future. I'm always reading comments and um, you know staying pretty active with you guys. So make sure you leave any suggestions in the comments, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.